Time for a Q and A, because you have questions, I have answers, and I w hit 100,000 subscribers, so let's do this. Normally I do it privately on my Patreon, but this month I thought I'd do it publicly, out in the open. So I have a bunch of questions from all of my lovely subscribers and some patrons. We're going to go through them and figure out all of the things about Jurish and Gaming FTL. So, let's start with Mark Ravilbik. How long have you been streaming for and making videos for? Well, streaming, I've only really done lots of it this year. So 2018 is the year of streaming for Josh, but I've been making videos since like 2011, and I wasn't very good at it ages ago. <laughs> I think if you look back, you can find one of the earliest videos I've ever made was on uh, 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 Kerbal Space Program, I think, something like that. Yeah, I had a lot of fun back then just finding weird indie games and making videos about them. And then it uh, it grew. When is your birthday? Uh, it's October 22nd. So, presents, please. No, that's a joke. You don't have to send me presents. You just have to subscribe. That's literally all you have to do. <laughs> uh, where did you get the idea to start streaming and making videos? Well, I wanted to write about video games because I thought it would be fun to get free video games. <laughs> When I was when I uh, when I first started the channel, my friend was writing for a, a website and was getting all these awesome indie games. I was like, I want to show off indie games, and he said, No, you can't write for the website. And I was like, Oh, well, I guess I'll make a YouTube channel. Talking about things will be much easier than writing about things, and I wasn't wrong. It it was easier for me, and <laughs> so I I set out to share my love of all of these weird little indie games that like no one had heard of that were really really good and interesting and new and trying out new things uh, and just being silly and unusual which is me i love being silly and un unusual so i thought i'd share that with the world and that's when i started alpha watch which was a, a really silly series name but a really fun thing to do while i was at university so uh, that um really kind of helped me, uh, it gave me a crea creative outlet, which was nice because I was doing science and I wasn't very good at it. So I was frustrated, but uh, sharing the things that I loved and hearing people uh, like respond going, hey, I, I love this too, found, uh, gave me like a real sense of accomplish accomplishment and uh, allowed me to uh, feel good about making things, which is uh, what I want you lot to have. Like, just ha hanging out in a video, feeling better, and uh, yeah, just a nice thing to explore in video games. So yeah, that's, that's what gave me a, the idea to start my channel. It's a bit of a weird one, but uh, I loved it, and I still do. So. What job did I have before being a YouTuber? Uh, well, I started YouTubing in university, so I, the, I guess waiter. When I was a teenager, I, I was a waiter at a pub. Um, so that was before, but during being a YouTuber, like very early days when YouTubing wasn't my job, I uh, I went to, into selling cars. Um, what else did I do? I was a community manager for a video game company. That was fun. Um, but then uh, my channel exploded a little bit uh, a couple of years ago and uh, gave me enough uh, income, plain and simple, that's what lets people do YouTubing, um, to, to do it full time. So I was like, yes, let's start on this adventure. And uh, it hasn't stopped since. I'm just waiting for for the sky to fall, and uh, what was it the other day? YouTube just stopped working. That's cool. Good job, YouTube. We genuinely, I love you, YouTube, but uh, uh, I wish it wasn't so difficult, our relationship. Anyway, 
Um, let's take a look. YOLO Gamer says, what's my VAF game? I assume you mean fave? You just spelt it backwards. That's a clever trick. You almost got me there. But, uh, my, what's my favorite game? Um, my favorite game at the moment is probably Zelda Breath of the Wild. I am just running around. I've almost finished it. I've not fought Ganon yet. I've not even looked at going into the castle. I've spent like 50 hours running around <laughs> and fighting like goblins and stuff. And it is, uh, it's been a really good time. My uh, all time favorite game is probably Zelda Wind Waker. Or, I mean, there are a lot of really great games that I really love, like uh, Vampire Bloodlines or, um, I don't, I don't know, Total War Medieval 2. That's a really great strategy game that I spent hundreds of hours. Or just Pokemon, the entire Pokemon series. I am a Pokemaniac. That's me. I love it. Um, it yeah, it was good. Um, I spent, probably spent at least a thousand hours across several Pokemon games, at least. Um, and let's go to a couple of patron questions. I know that I have some here. Here. Ah, Draco! Well, Draco asks something that is uh, slightly different to what I do on this channel. So, what are the main aspects, and you'll figure out what I'm talking about in a minute, what are the main aspects of Vampire the Masquerade that drew you to it? Hmm, well, just to explain for those who don't know, I run a show on my Twitch channel uh, called... Vampire the Masquerade, where me and some friends, we stream. Uh, this is for mature audiences only, because there's like blood and guts and, and horrible stuff happening in it. It's uh, it, it's very uh, dark and lots of evil stuff happens, and it's not necessarily very nice all the time. And I think that's part of what drew me to it. Um, I'm not usually one for the classic gung-ho, let's adventure, fellows, medieval fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons, but um, Vampire, uh, it was just cool. Um, honestly, the first time I ever played it was just because I really wanted to get into playing tabletop role-playing games, because my friend... Um, was was playing Vampire at the time, and I was like, oh, uh, you, you've got a space, do you mind if I join? And he was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and then I slowly discovered the world by playing it. So I think it's just kind of a, a very rich um, lore and a very interesting and twisted take on all the classic conspiracy theories and stuff like that, which is is really fun. It's not like a proper answer to your question. There's, there's a lot to it, and I think it's more of a general vibe that brings me to a vampire game uh, rather than um, other kinds of role-playing game, which I also love anyway. So yeah, uh, what advice would I give to someone GMing for the first time? Hmm, so GMing, for those who don't know, because I know that there's lots of people uh, on this channel that don't know I play role-playing games on Twitch. So, Games Master, the person who runs the show, the person who organises all their friends and players, um, is, is the person who cr helps create the story in the world for the players to interact with, and they decide on kind of how things play out when you roll a dice. So, that's how the GM works, but what advice would I give to someone if they've never GM'd before? I know that I get very um, kind of antsy and uh, worried when I GM for the first time before I started a, a game with some friends, and every time. Like, not once we've done it for a few sessions, but on the start of a new game, it's always a bit uh, worrying because I'm like, oh, what if this doesn't happen? Don't worry, is the advice. Don't worry, know that your friends are there to have fun, and they will be very forgiving if you do something uh, unusual or unexpected, and to be honest, uh, if you don't, if you stop worrying, you will realize that everything that you don't show them, they don't know exists. 
And what that means is that if you play a game with your friends and you forget something or uh, they don't quite go the direction you expect and you have to make something up, they won't know. They just won't know. If you pull something out of your butt and go, hey, this is the amazing golden statue of blah blah blah, uh, and you made it up on the spot, it exists now. Roll with it and pretend it was the plan all along. <laughs> Um, let's go back to YouTube comments, because I know that was slightly different and might confuse some people. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, uh, Benjamin Short asks, are you bringing back Similand? Similand didn't go nowhere. Similand will definitely continue. Um, I'm probably waiting until they've uh, released a new update, which might take a little while, but Similand's awesome. And uh, I, I just need to wait for people to get excited about it. And then we can all have fun exploring the new stuff that they add in. Moving on to Tominated. What is your favorite genre of games? And uh, what programming language are you using for your mod? Okay, favorite genre of games is difficult. I really, really enjoy... Uh, all the genres? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I play literally anything I I can, I can get my hands on. Um, I Favourites are a difficult one for me because I'm like, ooh, shiny new thing, uh, which is not necessarily bad because like all the shiny old things are still cool. Um, so favourites are difficult. If I had to pick one, maybe all-time favourite genre would be strategy? I don't know. I could spend I can spend hours and hours and hours just playing one strategy game. So I think I think that that's pretty good. Like Stellaris. You remember the Stellaris YouTuber Wars? Played that for like a hundred hours. Yeah, it's good. Anyway, um, what programming language am I using for my mod? Now Tominated is talking about the Battle Bugs mod that I have created and is available. So if you want to download it, link in the description. Or uh, possibly if you want to look at it, I will link a video here where I'm showing you what's going on. Anyway, what programming, pra bleep, what programming language? Uh, it was made in Game Maker and the source is all in the program programming. Bleep, brr, I don't know why that's so difficult for me. Programming language, Game Maker language, it, GML. Um, it's not the best language, it's not the worst language, it's just the language that the game was using already, and I know some stuff about Game Maker. Um, I don't think there's like a best programming language, if that's what you're asking. I know some people are like, what's the best thing to use? And I'm normally like, literally anything you can get your hands on. If you want to make a video game, anything. Anything that lets you make a video game is the best thing to start using. It doesn't have to be Assassin's Creed, it can just be anything that you find fun. Just start small. There's a website called Sorting Hat. Uh, if you use that, it will go through some questions about what you know about making games and give you all the tools you could possibly use depending on what you want to make. So I'm going to link that for all you budding game makers if you find that useful. Santiago Thomas says, does anyone live with you? Yeah, I live with my girlfriend, Lexi, and she can be seen popping up in uh, the April Fool's video that I made, <laughs> or sometimes on twitch.tv forward slash gamingftl when we stream. Uh, she comes in and makes fun of me and we have a good time. And uh, she's, she's awesome. Next question. Shiro the Ghosts asks, will you ever try to play Clone Drone with fans using duels? I have already. I don't do it on video and I don't do it on stream, but I play duels sometimes just in my casual downtime. So if you want to catch me, I, I don't know. I just I randomly play it. Maybe we'll meet each other. Ah, and another video game specific question. Greybeard's Biscuit, which is an awesome name, asks, where's Jerusha's Good Goods and Son? Well, the good goods got sold and the sun, I think, kind of disappeared into uh, a puff of smoke. 
uh, like all the other people in that game, which is very mysterious. Uh, no, seriously, Shopkeeper 2, I have stopped playing, so I'm sorry, I don't think that's coming back. Uh, sometimes videos don't do as well as I want, or I can't think of anything new and fun to do with the series. I don't want to just kind of churn out the same old video over and over again. I want to make sure there's always something new and exciting going on. So, um, hopefully you'll join us for future episodes of making and selling things in other games. Zippity Zooza Boopia Ba asks... <laughs> When will a second Battle Bug season be coming soon? I'm going to make a video of the things I intend to make, the things I've already made, and a new version of the game where the if you don't if you collide with a wall, you don't get stuck. So I'm working on that right now, but as soon as that's finished, I will release a video about uh, the things I've added in and the things I've changed, because there's a lot of really cool ideas I have for that, and a lot of really cool ideas that you all have for it that I've um, I've had re replied to me in my comments section of the Battle Bugs videos. So yeah, really looking forward to that. People are asking me about first game ever played. Let's let's do that one quick because I think. I don't actually know the first ever game I played, but I'm bad at games is asking what is the first game I ever played, and the first game I remember playing, it was a Star Trek game on my mum's DOS computer, and you, it was kind of side-on, and you had to move the Enterprise around, and you had to move to uh, different places and make sure you don't get killed, and it was really hard because you moved around and then you instantly died because it, uh, you got shot by the aliens. I don't, I don't remember what it was called, but that was the first one I ever remember playing. Oh, this one's really quick. Fidel Harris asks why your channel name is Gaming Faster Than Light because I'm bad at naming things. <laughs> it used to just be Gaming FTL, which meant for the lazy because let's plays and laziness and I'm very lazy so I don't, I don't I'm just really bad at naming things I'm, I'm actually thinking of changing the entire thing to just Josh FTL because then it's got my name in it and everyone will call me that in, instead of calling me gaming FTL I don't know I I'm just bad at naming things uh, and I think my favorite question that I really want to actually answer now as the last one, Samad G asks, who inspired you to make YouTube videos and why? So the reason that I made a YouTube channel when I wanted to write about games is because I saw Jesse Cox and Dodger, two of my favorite ever YouTubers, hanging out, making fun videos, they were really, really entertaining. I, I felt like I could go back and watch their stuff whenever they uploaded new things and I would always have a good time. And I wanted to uh, be able to make things like that. They inspired me because they were so positive and they created a really nice community. I just enjoyed going back and watching their videos because they were, they were real people and that was refreshing to me back when YouTube was a relatively new thing to me and I didn't watch of it uh, a lot of it before then. So um, that's that's who inspired me. Those two are the best. And they're still going um, and I still watch their stuff. I'm loyal. I'm a loyal fan. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, if, uh, if you've ever wanted to know anything about me, maybe I'll do another one of these in the future depending on, uh, I don't know, if people enjoy it. We'll find out. If you have questions, put them in the comments, or if you have um, something else you'd like to let me know, then uh, comments, always comments. Uh, yeah, so maybe we'll do another one of these in the future. But until then, mustache.